You defended this city from the worst the darkness sent against us. Your light has been our beacon. We thank you, Guardian, and we will never forget. Hello, and welcome to the second in a series of three live streams about Age of Triumph. Uh, this will be the final live event as part of your Destiny 1 adventure. Uh, I'm Deej, I will be your host for the next hour, and today we'll, we will be talking to two of the designers at Bungie that have helped to bring this event to life, to make this celebration happen, and we're gonna be talking to them about some of the different weekly rituals that will make a week in the life of your guardian more rewarding, more action-packed, and maybe even add a little bit more mayhem to that experience, right? Exactly. So uh, today we're going to be talking to Tim Williams, Hi, Twitch. As well as Joe Sifferman. Hello. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, before we delve into the details, and we've got a lot to cover today, uh, I want to introduce you to our audience, uh, give them a sense for why we brought you onto the couch and why you're going to be talking to us about the things that you've created for uh, the players of Destiny to enjoy. So, Tim. Yes. We're going to start with you. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, for uh, people who uh, were not watching these uh, live reveals last year when we were talking about uh, the April update, or the Taken Spring, Taken spring. If, if Ryan Parody is to have his way. Yeah. Um, talk to us about uh, what you've been doing at Bungie since you were here to reveal Challenge of the Elders. Yeah, uh, so since Challenge of the Elders and the April update, uh, I did some work with the Rise of Iron story missions. Um, I'm currently working with the events and r rituals team. Um, so the dawning, um, mm -hmm. Age of Triumph, um, yeah, just trying to keep our, keep our players um, having stuff to do. Yeah, I mean, Destiny is a game that calls people back to the experience to enjoy it mm -hmm. in different ways, whether it's the featured activities on the director or things like the dawning. Uh, we, we love to call people back to the tower and give them new reasons to fight. So yeah. thank you so much for helping to make that happen. No problem. And Joe Sifferman. Yes. Welcome to your very first Bungie live stream. Thank you. Glad to have you. Uh, talk to us about what you do at Bungie. So I am a live strike designer. Uh, we do, so we've done all of the redos to the strikes that we've done, all the, the updates. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we do some of these events like we're going to talk about today. Okay. So uh, we have seen uh, previously from you things like uh, the... Um, Sivified strikes in uh, Rise of Iron, right. Uh, right. as well as uh, you also had uh, a hand along with your team in uh, strike scoring that we saw for the first time in the dawn. Yes. Okay. Yeah, strike scoring was us too. Yep. And uh, obviously, uh, strikes are going to play uh, a major role in not only the stream, but in how the weekly reach rituals of Age of Triumph uh, make Destiny a little bit more rewarding over the course of one weekly reset to the next. And those are the things that we're going to be uh, speaking about today. So. Uh, in order to uh, give that some context and to talk about exactly how this is going to work, uh, we take you live to the tower. And uh, gentlemen, talk to me a little bit about how Age of Triumph will begin. Uh, what are the first steps that I will take as part of this experience? Yeah, so um, when you launch into the Age of Triumph, you're going to want to go talk to the speaker. He's got a quest for you. Okay, so uh, we will uh, fast forward through time through the miracle of our development environment, and uh, we will pretend that it is March 28th. And uh, here is our old friend, the speaker, the and uh, I will approach. And as we can see here, you are our the speaker has a new quest. Complete story missions in the featured weekly story playlist. That sounds new. Yeah. Uh, Guardian, you are our protector, our champion, our legend. I have faith that you will turn the tide that rises against humanity. So I'm going to accept this quest and destroy the darkness. Step one of this quest, destroy the darkness. How many steps can we expect to uh, enjoy as part of this quest? Um, I want to say about 12. Okay. This is, this is a quest that will take you 
through all the content that we've created mm -hmm. um, for the Destiny 1 experience. So you've got patrols in there, you got your story missions, you got strikes, some PvP. So if uh, you missed our uh, stream last week, let's talk one more time about the basic themes of this event. I mean, this is essentially the culmination of your Destiny 1 adventure. Yeah, so we knew that this was going to be our last live event for Destiny 1, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that um, we, we took the three years of experience that we've helped build and, you know, kind of give it a love letter or put a nice bow on it for okay. our players. Yeah, and we've described it as everything from a curtain call to a victory lap, the grand finale. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that uh, story mission playlist is going to make that happen. Uh, before we do that, since we're talking about rewards, uh, let's check in with Tess Everis of the Eververse Trading Company. And uh, tell me what Tess Steve, has now. So for, for this release, we have the Treasure of Ages. Okay, the new box. Yes. And uh, in essence, all up, what do I expect to find in this box? Uh, so in this box, we've, we've actually put everything that the live team has released. So, you know, if you have collections out there that you haven't um, filled up, mm -hmm. like this is a great way to um, get those things. Yeah. Titan armor only. No, no. No, I mean, we're, we're borrowing, we're borrowing yes. Joe Blackburn's uh, Titan that we imported last week. So uh, essentially, all of the armor and all of the different things that uh, Eververse Trading has had as a component of these previous events, uh, things like the Spectar armor, things like the Desolate Taken armor. Uh, so you've created essentially a box that enables me to capture any of the missing items that I might have been coveting over uh, all of these different events. Yes. So uh, that's in all of these different categories, Sparrow Racing emblems, different types of emotes, and uh, the list goes on. Uh, if uh, you never got that ghost ghost, this just could be your opportunity to add that to your collection, to put it in your kiosk. Different masks from Festival of the Lost. I mean, this is just everything all up. Ships, horns, sparrow horns, uh, different sparrows. Uh, and then uh, we've also got, what are these? Uh, so that's Days of Iron Ornament. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get one item from each of the categories on the left um, and middle. And then we've also got some of the different consumables that have made these events a little more uh, interactive, a little bit more fun, uh, as well as uh, the chroma that we introduced last April. Yeah. Okay. And then on the right, we have some possible new items. Like new culture. items. Like, so this is a, a new suit of Age of Triumph armor. Mm -hmm. And uh, as much as people want me to show this armor, that's the uh, theme for next week. So we're going to bring in Ian McIntosh and Josh Hamrick to talk about all the different ways you'll be able to decorate your guardian, as well as how some of these sandbox items are going to change up the way that we fight. Uh, new shaders and, of course, new ships. Yeah, Got to travel in style. Uh, so what would you say to somebody that says, uh, you know, that's all well and good, but there's very specific things that I want. And these boxes don't always give me exactly what I'm looking for. If I have a very specific ornament that I've been craving, uh, how do I go about getting those things? Yeah, so, um, you know, you're, you, you use the box, you get some silver dust. Yeah. Um, Break down an item I don't want and I get silver dust. Exactly. Okay. So we have updated the silver dust kiosk. Have a nice day. Okay. So we'll come over here. Access, access the silver dust store and uh, check that out. First thing to call out, this is a much bigger place now. We have five different collections up here. And uh, I have engrams that cover different types of categories of rewards. So if I have enough silver dust, I can come in here and I can grab very specific things on a one-off. Absolutely. So uh, we're giving the player a lot of control over exactly how they reward themselves for the time they spend in the game. 
And uh, as we consume those, uh, what is the name of the box again? Treasure of the Ages. Yes. Okay. Uh, one treasure, many ages. Uh, this silver dust will help us grab the things that uh, we really want or need. And then as we go through, take a look at these collections, we can see that uh, these are many different ornaments, many different vehicles from different events, shaders, sparrow horns, different masks from Festival of the Lost, more masks from Festival of the Lost, different series of emotes, different lenses to change up the appearance of the game, and of course, some of the different ways in which we communicate with each other non-verbally in the tower. Yep. So it should be said that uh, your Destiny possessions, your Destiny 1 possessions, your Destiny 1 Eververse-related items will stay in Destiny 1. Yes. Destiny 1 will be available to you uh, for the foreseeable future. But if you're uh, maintaining a balance of silver in Destiny, uh, this box, this uh, final Eververse offering in Destiny 1 is going to be uh, the last thing that we'll have for you to buy. So uh, if you're maintaining a balance of silver in Destiny, uh, help yourself to those boxes. It'll be an opportunity to uh, claim something that might have eluded you and uh, put that thing in your uh, kiosk. Uh, there is a collections page in the Age of Triumph record book. Yeah. And that could be a great way for somebody to uh, get the final things that they need to be complete. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, let's come here and check in with uh, Shax now. Talk to me about how the champion of our crucible is operating differently in Age of Triumph. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is his available bounties. Mm -hmm. uh, there are now two weekly okay. um, bounties, and they are for 6v6 mode game type. Um, gotcha. Okay. And then uh, coming down here, I also see that uh, this new arena engram, uh, if I'm holding silver dust and uh, I have crucible rank three, uh, I'll be able to obtain a crucible armor piece. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, of course, he still has all of these badass weapons and swords, uh, some of which made their first appearance in uh, the dawning. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, that is You've got work all up a summary of the offerings in the tower and some of the things that you'll want to uh, take a look at uh, before you begin your Age of Triumph adventure. And uh, with that done, we're going to return to orbit. So Destiny has always been a game of uh, special occasions, uh, you mm -hmm. know, things like Trials of Osiris and Iron Banner come to mind as reasons why players have come back to play the game again and again uh, over weeks, over months. But uh, one of the frequent pieces of feedback that we get with our Crucible programming is that people want different reasons to play PvE content. Give me new reasons to come back and fight the enemies of the darkness. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we take a look at our director, we've always had these featured activities down in the lower left-hand corner. Yeah, so this is your go-to spot when you log in on any given week. Mm -hmm. So if you've, uh, if you've finished all of your different story missions, if you've gone to these destinations and you've completed your missions, uh, this is essentially an expression of the Destiny Endgame. And last week we covered the weekly featured raid activity. Yep. And uh, just to summarize, if you missed it, uh, all of the raids that uh, you will find in Destiny are, are being brought back up for uh, an appropriate challenge for a Guardian at their maximum potential. So all of the raids will be playable at 390 light. Uh, they'll all have new armor ornaments. They'll all have challenge modes. And once a week, you'll have an opportunity to jump into one of these raids uh, and play them at 390 uh, to experience all of the challenge modes at the same time and uh, earn back some of that sweet gear that uh, may have defined your Guardian in the first or second years of Destiny. Uh, we have new ornaments for you to earn, and that will be part of the, uh, the loot table. Yep. But, uh, Tim, talk to us about what else you've done to uh, make the week more rewarding. Yeah, so uh, one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that uh, there's endgame for everybody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have five Guardian friends online. Um, so we did bring up the Challenge of Elders. Okay. It is the one that you're used to at the lower light level, but... Um, we've added legendary marks for your first three completions. Mm -hmm. um, it's still as rewarding 
as the lower level one, it's actually more rewarding. The investment team has been generous as frickin' heck, Ge I think. Generous <laughs> as, yeah, generous as frickin' heck. Yeah, for our so, family-friendly stream. Yes. We won't quote the inside baseball developer terminology uh, verbatim, but yeah, we want to make uh, Age of Triumph more generous, and uh, the fact that we have uh, a challenge of elders that we can play, uh, you can play it all week long, Yep. but three times during that week, it's going to give you 10 legendary marks for a grand total of 30 yep. that you can earn over the course of that week. And then on the weekly reset, on that fateful Tuesday early morning Pacific time, yeah. everything resets. Yeah, and you're still going to have the ticket from Varix that will okay. give you the rewards. Yep. And uh, we, we do still have the, the older version in um, the reef node. So we're mm -hmm. not removing anything to get you to this level. Yeah, we're just adding on to yeah. uh, your options. And uh, I get one legendary engram for doing this every week, or do I get one legendary engram every single time I play it? Um, I believe the legendary engram is the first time, but it's still generous mm -hmm. every time you complete it. Okay, so. but we're guaranteed a legendary engram if we play this once a week. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, and then uh, let's move over here to uh, that old weekly favorite, the weekly nightfall strike. Uh, this is very hard, but uh, not as hard as a raid, at least not numerically. So uh, Joe, talk to us about uh, how the nightfall is about to change. Uh, we can call out immediately that it's not a 390 activity, it's a 380 activity. Right. Um, so the, I think kind of the biggest thing that is different about the nightfall strikes is we have a new modifier that we're calling daybreak. Mm -hmm. The Daybreak uh, modifier takes in all of the epic modifiers, so it uh, increases the difficulty of, a, of all of the combatants. And it also increases the rate of your recharge for all of your abilities, so your grenades, your melee, and your supers. Yeah, the Guardian's expression of power recharges much more quickly. Uh, we're essentially borrowing from the PvP, from the Crucible experience, that mayhem experience. Yes. Yep. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, unknown rewards. Unknown rewards are unknown. Uh, <laughs> but uh, essentially, we should expect to earn from a Nightfall Strike what we have earned from a Nightfall Strike. Yeah, nothing's changing there. And then uh, we have the uh, Skeleton Key. Uh, and we're going to play one of these Daybreak Strikes, uh, which will be this new PvE experience, this new uh, guardians versus their enemies experience in just a moment, but before we do that, let's take a look at some of the other weekly featured activities. We have uh, the SIVA Crisis Heroic Strike playlist. Uh, also, not as hard, but certainly uh, a fitting challenge for any, any modern guardian. Uh, we have this at recommended light 350. So where's the intended audience there, do you think? Yeah, so um, this is You've completed the Rise of Iron campaign. You're, you're at 345, 350. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to get to the Nightfall levels, the, mm -hmm. the Challenge of Elders, getting raid ready. Um, so this is, this is your stepping stone. Yeah, you've got sort of got like stair steps up to those mm -hmm. 390 raids. So if I played Rise of Iron, I didn't commit myself fully to the Destiny endgame after that, but I really got my sights set on that new... Um, you know, redeployed Vault of Glass, this is a good opportunity to play some of these heroic strikes, then maybe play some Nightfall strikes, yep. uh, and then I'm, I'm ready for Challenge of the Elders and Raids. Yeah, and uh, this is one of the places where you get one of those Treasure of Ages for your first completion. Yeah, so once a week I play a heroic strike playlist uh, just for showing up and, and throwing my own personal guardian into the action uh, and completing that activity, yes. uh, I get uh, one Treasure of Ages, uh, the new Eververse box with uh, just about everything that we've ever created that's in there. I, I also get uh, Legendary Marks. I get 10 Legendary Marks, yeah. and uh, I can do that three times a week. So uh, I get, if I enjoy this playlist, every week I, I can expect one box and 30 Marks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else about this? I and mean, we can see the modifiers in there. We can see the different things that you're doing. Uh, anything about this that you'd like to say that's different? Um, no. Generous is frick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we get it. We get it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's elaborate on uh, the speaker's quest because we're used to seeing one daily heroic story mission every day. Yeah. Uh, but we have a kind of an elaboration 
on that old ritual right here with this weekly story playlist. Talk to me about the function of this. Yeah, so um, we know that sometimes you can't log in every day and you can lose out on legendary marks that way. Yeah. So, so what we did is we, we took all of the story missions um, from Destiny and put them into a playlist that mm -hmm. you can complete at any time during the week. Okay. Um, do five of them, get 100 legendary marks. Um, That's a lot of marks. Yeah. That's and great. on your first completion, you'll get a Treasure of Ages. Um, we've also added um, modifiers. The Specialist and Grounded seems to be this week. Yeah. You um, haven't done that since Queen's Wrath. Yeah. A, for, for those of you who may have joined your Destiny Adventure in Progress, Queen's Wrath was a short-lived uh, PvE event in the first year of Destiny, and uh, we haven't done story modifiers since then, so that's good to see that back. Yeah. Um, so each week, this is going to rotate. Um, we have a lot of story missions. So um, on the particular week we're on in our dev environment, it's Mars and Venus. Yep. This will be all of the story missions from the original Destiny 1 that took place on Mars and Venus. OK. Um, I think there's about 10 of them. Yeah. Um, you know, I think first week we're going with Earth and Moon. Mm -hmm. um, Third week is uh, House of Wolves and yeah. Dark Below. Like, so you'll send us back to the Dreadnought for the Taken King content. You'll exactly. send us back to the Plaguelands for. So this right. is a. It's nice that that's kind of on a given theme. It can be uh, that week you'll have a specific type of remembrance, which is mm -hmm. definitely one of the themes of Age of Triumph. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and come back in here and take one last look. Uh, that rounds out the essential experience of playing the weekly story playlist. Uh, play one mission, and you get uh, one of those Treasure of Ages boxes. Uh, play five of those missions, which is the first step in the speaker's new quest. Exactly. Okay, so the speaker's quest will send us through experiencing all of these different things in new ways. Mm -hmm. But we'll begin with reliving some of the moments from the story. Exactly. And then, of course, last, but certainly, certainly not least, yeah, so um, we have the crucible. To get everything to fit, we took one of the crucible nodes and made it the daily story node. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're going to see here in this slot is a six v six PvP playlist that rotates every week. Okay. Um, the the Shaxx quest yes. will be for this one and okay. another one on the crucible node. Yeah, the Shaxx bounties that we saw when we went and inspected him. Okay. So uh, just want to call out one more time. We took a look at the Treasure of Ages box. If people are thinking about this is my chance to get that final ornament or to get that final sparrow horn, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever motivates you, uh, whatever helps you illustrate the legend of your character, uh, we can get a Treasure of Ages box every week. We can get three of them from playing one Crucible match from the featured list, playing one story mission from the featured list, and playing one heroic strike from yes. the featured list. So if that Treasure of Ages box is something you have your sights on, there's three chances with three activities over the course of a week. Mm -hmm. And then this, you can sort of see in ascending order the things that you can do to jump back into those raids and earn some of the, we'll show you next week, some of the most interesting rewards that I think we've ever created in Destiny. Oh yeah, they're the, beautiful. The new armor's really pretty cool. So uh, that is essentially as part of Age of Triumph, a week in the life of your guardian. Exactly. All right, well, let's jump into one of these activities. Uh, that's what we've been talking about. Uh, we have a uh, fire team assembled, uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to experience a daybreak strike. We're gonna take a look at how mayhem will influence your player versus the enemies of the darkness activity. And we have a fire team assembled, uh, Joe, Talk to us about which strike we're going to be playing today. So today we're playing the Sunless Cell. Um, it is, yeah, so the modifiers I think are Berserk, uh, Airborne, uh, Arcburn, and I don't remember the other one. Okay. Well, Brawler. Well, uh, Brawler. What is it? Brawler. Brawler. Okay. So, uh, our guardians, uh, they already have their super ready. They were, <laughs> waiting for, uh, they were waiting for their chance to be on the show. Uh, just at a glance, I can see in the uh, lower left-hand corner that 
you still have the uh, the new timer there. Yes, yeah, strike scoring is still uh, going on. And if uh, you're a guardian who has always wanted to complete a strike within 30 minutes to uh, receive that accolade, having uh, maximum supers, having maximum guardian abilities could be a great way to uh, quite literally burn through this activity. Yeah, it's definitely a, gives you a bit of an advantage. <laughs> So uh, talk to us about um, the inspiration of this. You've essentially taken the, uh, the Mayhem Super Recharge modifier from the Crucible and applied it to strikes. Uh, is this something that you wanted to do for a long time, or did it feel like it fit, uh, fit the themes of Age of Triumph? Uh, it, we really felt it fit the themes of the Age of Triumph, uh, kind of a celebration of the light and the, uh, the player's power and uh, the projection of that power into the game. So this is, uh, for many players, likely to be our last hurrah with some of these strikes. Yeah. So why not just turn them into an ultimate badass and let them go in there and hurl their light in every single direction? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you felt like you needed to change in order to compensate for that? Have you made uh, the bad guys a little bit badder? No, uh, everything is still uh, the same as a normal Nightfall Strike. We, we have, like I said, we have the Epic modifier for the combatants and then all the other uh, modifiers that come along with uh, Nightfall. You just, you just have more power. And uh, is that recharge rate going to be something that we'll benefit from in every space of the game if we're on the strike? It will not. You will not get it in the public spaces. But every, every private space you'll have it. So you can't just sit in a public bubble and blast all of the guys that keep on spawning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So no, no super farming in a, uh, in a public space, duly noted. Uh, so uh, we're watching our Guardians play here. Uh, the, you know, they've all chosen their characters. We have a Hunter, we have a Titan, we have a Warlock. Uh, talk to me a little bit about some of your favorite subclasses to use in a Daybreak Strike. Uh, you know, let's, let's swap some notes here, just on a personal level. Uh, like, what, which characters do you like to play now that it's, it's you know, super energy all over the place in the I, constructs of a strike? I enjoy playing a Warlock and the Stormcaller. You just have such a, uh, a, an, an immense room clearing capability with that uh, character. It's yeah. pretty fun. How about you, Tim? Well, um, I like the Stormcaller as well. Okay. I'm a Warlock main, okay. so... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the room clear, like, just being able to take out a bunch of Thrall in, in one super feels really good. Gets all those orbs for my friends. Yep. Especially in an encounter like this where we have uh, that arc burn. Ch check out the, the airborne tether there. A little bit of uh, acrobatic action here. Um, you know, we don't have very good uh, equal representation on this panel right now because, yeah. obviously, we are all Warlock players. Um, I can tell you that I'm already looking forward to uh, taking off the Void Fang vestments that are a huge part of my Crucible strategy. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know throw a grenade, get killed, respawn, repeat. And um, I'm going to put back on that Light Beyond Nemesis, that beautiful shiny black helmet, which is just going to give me even more super energy. So oh, yeah. uh, I'm just going to be uh, a Nova Bomb terror uh, in, these, in these Daybreak Strikes. Um, but let's also give people a sense of... Um, with these burns, you said that there's an arc burn today. Yes. Uh, are you ever going to do something as crazy as a rainbow burn? There will be some weeks that have a rainbow burn. Okay, yes. okay. Uh, and what are some of the things that uh, these players have done today just to configure their uh, guardian builds to maximize their potential with an arc burn in play? So you, uh, a lot of times you want to pick a subclass that has the uh, an arc subclass, like the stormcaller, like the stormcaller. Um, also, you want to put on your equipment that reduces arc damage to you, of mm -hmm. course. So you're not getting pounded so hard by the enemies. So they are making short, pretty short work of this. Uh, they're yeah. they're moving through this pretty well. Uh, they're they're fighting close together, which means they can take advantage of the orbs. Uh, we're seeing a lot of a lot of tethers, and uh, there's uh, going to be a lot of great. What were you saying before? There's going to be a lot of great synergistic action. Right. Yeah. Um, with the 
with strike scoring, a lot of the a lot of good points come from using your supers, and if you use your supers synergistically with each other, uh, for example, tethering and then having somebody that can clear a bunch of guys quickly, like a Stormcaller, uh, kill all the guys that are tethered, that kind of thing can increase your, your score. Mm -hmm. Now we have an entire page in the Age of Triumph record book that is devoted to strikes. Uh, how do you anticipate that the uh, introduction of these daybreak strikes will help somebody complete that page and, and get everything that you know, that page has to offer. Well, daybreak strikes are how I'm going to complete that page. Th that page is all about getting kills with grenades and melees, getting points, yeah. finishing your nightfall in 30 minutes. Like this, I don't. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be so much fun just supering all the guys. You know, we uh, we went to. Uh, PlayStation Experience, and that's where we revealed the dawning. Uh, so we showed people the return of Sparrow Racing League. We introduced strike scoring, but we never got to sit down on the streaming couch and talk at length about strike scoring. So since that's still a component of this experience, um, talk to me a little bit about how that work unfolded. Uh, you know, what were the conversations on the team about you know, adding a scored factor to the strikes? So it, a lot of it came, came out of wanting to give people an incentive to really uh, engage with all of the combat instead of just racing through everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that we've structured the scoring, uh, the, the tiers, is if you kill everything in the, in the, uh, in the strike, you'll, you'll get gold. And uh, you worked with uh, different members of the team to make that happen. Yeah, the primary person that did that was Robbie Stevens. Okay, well thank you Robbie Stevens for uh, strike scoring. And uh, we're glad that's still gonna be a component of Daybreak Strikes. So, uh, this is gonna definitely change the way that people play. I know you were talking before, Tim, about the fact that when you get your super, you would uh, save it for those moments where you really, really needed it. Yeah. Um, I used to main Sun Singer, okay. and yeah. and it was like, well, my job is to stop the wipe from happening, right? right? And um, I feel like Daybreak is just like, no, I'm going Stormcaller. I'm gonna retrain my brain to like always have be using my super, helping my friends, especially like on a strike like this where there's so many thrall and brawlers on, like, yeah. You know. Let's clear those rooms. Maximum enjoyment, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and now that we're not kicking people to orbit at the end of a nightfall anymore, mm -hmm. there's really um, no reason to not just throw yourself into the action, enjoy it for all it's worth. Uh, although, it should be said, this isn't going to be easy. We're no. Not, we're not taking the nightfall and we're not making this easy mode for the nightfall. Right, it is, it is definitely still a nightfall and when I play the Daybreak Strikes, I, I always end up overextending myself and you just get a little bit too cocky with, uh, your, <laughs> yeah. with your powers and you get ahead of yourself and you can get into trouble pretty quick. So it's, it's definitely still Nightfall. Okay, well, these guys are progressing deeper into this activity. Uh, let's take a look at... at we just, there are so many tethers. There are just so, <laughs> so many tethers. Uh, hey, Scott, can we uh, spectate some of the other characters just to see how are the uh, different supers operating? There we go. Gentlemen, there's your storm caller. Mm. Clear in that room. With the number of uh, thrall that are uh, evident in this encounter, that's definitely a valuable subclass. Yeah, once you get to the, uh, the boss in this one, that, that's uh, super valuable. So uh, talk to me about uh, some of the different testing and some of the different process that you used to make sure that adding this mayhem modifier wouldn't ruin the strike. Uh, did you decide that, uh, you know, the PVP modifier was the right way to go? You know, did you try some different approaches to this? Yeah, we, we uh, messed around with the, with the rate of recharge of everything, and we, we came back to the same PV, PVP modifier uh, value. The PvP guys did a good job of getting that balanced out, and it worked well for the strikes. So, yeah, it's, it, it's the same modifier. You first. 
and into the depths you go. Now, it should be said that it's no accident that we chose this specific strike to play. Yes. We thought, what better way to uh, finish this reveal than to uh, you know, feature a boss fight that would just have, <laughs> there he is, oh, just I love that. super energy ringing out in the darkness. So already they put a huge, huge dent in their boss. Uh, they're playing in close quarters, which means orbs for everybody. And uh, this is an opportunity to show how, with every Guardian using their supers, with maximum potential, maximum recharge rates, exactly how this impacts the experience at hand. Uh -oh. oh, he's gonna, oh, kick, no. gonna, he's gonna <laughs> oh, no. kick your ass, but here we go, it's hammer time. I love the way the boss gets lit up by supers in, in this encounter. Yeah, just illuminated as this dangerous silhouette. Uh, and there's just so many of them. I mean, obviously, I think if Destiny had always been like this, it wouldn't have been a shooter. It would have just been a space magic game. You know, I think it's nice that up to this point, we have always treated the super like this special moment, you know, where every once in a while, if your back is up against the wall, you get this ultimate expression of power. But this is a celebration, right? Yeah, yeah we're celebrating the Guardians. Uh oh. A little bit of space magic uh -oh. confetti, more hammers. How many Guardians do we have down? Good revive. I think they had two down. Two down, so. okay, so this Titan is the uh, the blue hero right now. Let's see if we can get an eye on the boss and uh, find out how much more fighting they have left to do. They're about halfway Ooh. there. So, still a shooter, definitely still a necessary amount of gunplay here. Uh, but I think anybody who is familiar with this strike and familiar with this final encounter uh, can agree that the extent to which everyone is supercharged is giving the Guardians uh, a brilliant way to just more hammers, more hammers, <laughs> tons of hammers. Yeah, we can hear, we can hear them <laughs> on the other side of the room saying, oh God. Here we go, let's get those revives. Oh. This is no time. This is no time to die. And with Arc Burn, with all those Thrall, it's... Yep, yep, they need that Stormcaller to do that work. Well, it's... More hammers! And it's, it's Brawler this week as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Almost there. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arc Burn on Brawl, probably not a great strategy, though. No. Let's put this boss to bed. You guys are so close. Can the Stormcaller finish the fight? No, nope, it's doing some crowd control. Here we go. Nice. There we go. Good and job, victory guys. is yours, Guardians. Well done, well done. Good demonstration. Good live fire exercise. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to send that fire team uh, back to the tower for uh, one final piece of business. Uh, but before we do that, um, let's talk one more time about Nightfall Rewards. Uh, it has been at different times throughout our Destiny adventure, uh, a different experience. Sometimes the Nightfall has been the only way you could l rank up your character. Sometimes the Nightfall has been more rewarding than other times. Uh, have you made any essential changes to that? No, the, uh, the Nightfall Rewards should stay, remain the same. Okay, yeah. so what we're, the only thing we're changing here is my Guardian. Yeah. With yep. the Daybreak modifier, Just a modifier. Yeah. When, I, when I arrive in a Daybreak strike, my Guardian is the ultimate warrior, the ultimate practitioner of space magic. Yes. All right. And uh, nobody Melt else has been guys. able to get a leg up on me, so I am, I am King Kong. Yeah. Okay. Um, talk to me about scheduling. How often am I going to see a Daybreak modifier enter uh, the Nightfall rotation? So we're going to have the... The modifier is going to show up once every four weeks, so about once a month. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're going to start off with the daybreak uh, on March 28th. So on March 28th, the first nightfall strike that we see as part of Age of Triumph will have that daybreak modifier. And then I get it once a month after that. Now, yeah. you know, we both said this is going to be our favorite way to play the nightfall. What if I want more than that? Well, we're going to have a, a period starting on July, the week of July 18th where we're going to have, through the month of August, six weeks of Daybreak Strikes. Okay. So it'll be a nice block of 
supers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So here we are back in the tower, and uh, what's the first thing that we can observe here, Joe? Uh, blue flames are back. The blue flames are back, and the nightfall buff has returned. So uh, help yourself to a triumphant slow walk. Let these titans over here just see how badass you are, Guardians. You've got the blue flames, you've got the weekly buff of XP. You know, we've uh, talked throughout the course of this stream about the fact that what we're trying to do is to make every week a little bit more rewarding. Yeah. And what better way than to bring the nightfall back? Exactly. It, yeah. it gives you that nice thing on Tuesday night. Hey, let's, let's gather up. Let's get our blue flames so that we get that nice XP boost for the rest of the week. Yeah, okay. And then for the rest of the week, we could be enjoying uh, 390 raids. We could be enjoying 390 challenge of elders. Uh, we could be enjoying... Uh, 350 heroic strikes. There's mm -hmm. going to be plenty of ways to fill up that Age of Triumph record book, to get those ornaments, to uh, you know fill up your collection kiosks, and one more time, illustrate the legend of your guardian and decorate yourself as the ultimate warrior. Absolutely. In defense yeah. of the city. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Uh, that is, in a nutshell, what we wanted to show you this week. Uh, Age of Triumph will make. Uh, Destiny, a more rewarding game from one weekly reset to the next. Uh, next week, what we're going to be talking about is uh, all of the gear that we haven't showed you. Uh, we're going to show you some of the new ornaments that are in your Treasure of, of Ages Asia. box. Uh, we're going to show you some of the new ornaments that you can earn by being a master raider and going in and playing these new raids. Uh, with the, the new 390 raids with the new challenge modes. And uh, we're also going to talk about how the reintroduction of some of these legendary items, some of these uh, iconic raid weapons that have uh, defined the player experience throughout different phases of the adventure are gonna impact that sandbox one more time. So we'll show you how your guardian is going to look different. We're gonna show you how your guardian is going to fight different. Uh, it should be an interesting conversation about character customization and combat all up. So on the hot seat next week will be Ian McIntosh and Josh Hamrick to talk about all of those things. Uh, but it's been a pleasure to have both of you here with us this week. Were you going in for a handshake? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah, Steve. Yeah, you want it? Thanks, Twitch. <laughs> yeah. So Tim Williams, Joe Sipperman, uh, it's been our pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for uh, making the night fall uh, more fun, more rewarding, and giving us new reasons to come back to Destiny perhaps one more time. One more time. Uh, this is uh, the celebration of the adventure that has been Destiny 1 up to this point. It begins March 28th. Uh, we uh, thank you for joining us on our stream today. Uh, there are many of our community leaders and content creators who have been hosting this show as part of the Destiny directory. And uh, odds have it that they're going to be streaming some of their own gameplay starting right about now. So stay here in the Destiny directory. Go check in with some of the different people who are going to be playing the game as it is right now, this pre-Age of Triumph phase of Destiny that we're still enjoying. And uh, that's one of the great things about this platform, is the ability to go in and have some real-time conversation about what you just saw and you know hear what they have to think. So uh, we are going to end our show uh, a little bit early, but uh, we have one more stream where we'll be showing you uh, all of the awesome rewards that you'll be able to chase through these activities. Yeah. Uh, that's all we have for you today. Uh, I'm Deej. It's been my pleasure to host you, as always. I hope that you'll join us back here next week for the final reveal stream that we'll have before the launch of Age of Triumph on March 28th. March 28th is the day when this new age of triumph and remembrance begins. Before we leave you today, let's check out this cinematic that we showed last week just one more time. From the day your ghost woke you, your light has been our beacon. You defended this city from the worst the darkness sent against us. Atheon, Crota, Oryx, Axis. When you are called on, you will do it again. The city's children tell your story to each other. Pretending to be guardians, they grow braver and more powerful with each retelling. They are no longer afraid. You have shown them, and you have shown me, what it is to hope. You have led us to a new age, Guardian. 
an age of triumph and remembrance. Today and tomorrow and every day, you fight for us. You fight for the traveler. You fight for those who fled here from a thousand nations looking for refuge. We thank you, Guardian, and we will never forget. <laughs>